uh, carbon dioxide is really a, a good thing to focus on because if you think of context as being what's missing from a reductionist medicine, every life process, uh, carbon dioxide is a context that you have to uh, take into account. So the worse the stress is, or the more prolonged, the lower your thyroid gets. And that means that with aging, you tend to have accumulated so many stresses that your thyroid gets chronically depressed. And unless you give it the right signals to bring it back, it just stays there and gets lower and lower. So all of our hormone system is deranged uh, if we just hyperventilate and blow out too much carbon dioxide, or if we're hypothyroid, basically we're, in effect, hyperventilating, even at rest, producing lactic acid instead of carbon dioxide. Now, if you look at the molecule carbon dioxide, you can see, if you compare carbohydrate to fat, and ask which one of the, which atom is limiting for its formation, you can see that carbohydrate and fat both have plenty of carbon, but carbohydrate is rich in oxygen and fat is not and oxygen is limiting for the formation of carbon dioxide. That means that while fat is necessary to absorb the fat-soluble vitamins, the more carbohydrate we burn for energy, the more carbon dioxide that we make, the more carbon dioxide is available to activate the vitamin K-dependent proteins and thus assist vitamins A, D, and K in cooperating to fulfill their physiological functions. That means there's probably a role for consuming carbohydrate as well as fat again hinting at the overall balance of the diet. The way that vitamin K enables the protein to bind to calcium and thereby fulfill its physiological function is to add carbon dioxide to the protein. And if we look at the effectiveness of the enzyme in activating the protein, which is shown here, we can see that with increasing concentrations of carbon dioxide, the enzyme is better and better at activating vitamin K-dependent protein.